situated along the equator on the eastern coast of the African continent. Its coastal region is on the southeast of the country and it is bordered by Somalia on the east, Ethiopia to the north, Tanzania to the south and Uganda to the west. The southwestern border of the country is marked by Lake Victoria, while in the northern region of the country Lake Takana can be found. Just east of Lake Takana is the Chalbi Desert. As seen here, Kenya's landscape is extremely diverse as it can range from low-lying coastal areas to the snow-capped mountain peaks of Mount Kenya. The most important land use in Kenya is herbaceous cover, as indicated on the map in pale green. The northern areas of Kenya is dominated by sparse herbaceous or sparse shrub cover, while along the coastal southeastern parts of Kenya, forest habitats are present, with evergreen and deciduous trees. This conservation plan is being undertaken in order to bring attention to the fact that many endemic and endangered species and habitats are under threat in Kenya, mostly as a result of human activities. The aims of this project are to protect the local biodiversity of Kenya, provide a platform for conservation planning in Kenya, to educate the local people of Kenya about which species are endemic as well as which species are endangered, and to promote the sustainable use of resources in Kenya. Kenya has over 35,000 species of fauna and flora, with 20 endemic mammal species, 6 endemic bird species, 27 endemic reptile species, and 20 endemic amphibian species. But currently, only 7.5% of the total land area of Kenya is being protected. The Community Nature Reserve takes up the largest areas of the country. The second largest protected region forms part of the national park. Forest reserves are also numerous and can be found scattered throughout the northwestern quadrant of the country. For the analysis, nine species of mammals, three species of endemic amphibians, four species of endemic birds, and five species of endemic reptiles have been highlighted as part of this conservation plan. In amphibians, we have the Tata African Sicilian, whose status is endangered. For mammals, we have Grevy Zebra, which is not an endemic species, but whose population is endangered. The woodland thicket rat is an endemic species in Kenya, but is of least concern in terms of population trends. The cheetah is an apex predator in the Kenyan highlands, whose status is vulnerable. The black rhino has distributions which stretch all along Kenya, but these days the population is critically endangered. The African lion is an apex predator, whose status is vulnerable. And elephants, which are keystone species in Kenya, also exhibit vulnerable population sizes. Conservation planning targets can be defined as the amount of area required to conserve each faunal class. For mammals, this target is set at 50% because they require larger areas as they have larger home ranges. For birds, this target has been set at 30% because they are more mobile. The target for reptiles and amphibians have been set to 50% because they have stricter distributions in comparison to other faunal classes.
Toth was downloaded from T V G I S. Endemic species were identified using the Living National Treasures website. Data regarding the distributions of these species could then be downloaded from GBIF and the IUCN Red List. When defining conservation planning units, either the ecological approach, which makes use of the water basins and ecoregions of the country, or the systematic approach, which makes use of 45 degree hexagons, can be used. Boolean maps for the species distributions could then be created. Next, suitable conservation targets as well as species penalty factors for each species should be determined. Finally, the land tenure file should be prepared using the artificial and protected areas of the country, which can be downloaded from protectedplanet.org. The land tenure PSS file can then be created. All of these should then be used as the inputs for the running of MarkSan. When running MarkSan, the first run is usually for the assessment of the plan. The second run would therefore yield the best outputs. The inputs for MarkSan would either be the hexagon file or the eco-regions and water basins file. This would be the planning unit layer. Next, raster groups for each faunal class should be inserted. The species penalty factor, which is a value given to a particular species or group of species to indicate its importance for inclusion in the reserve network, should be set to 10. The planning unit tenure file may either be the planning unit tenure, which are the areas of the country that are currently protected, as well as the disturbed areas. Or it may be the PSS map, which is just a modified tenure map, which only highlights the protected areas of the country while everything else is listed as available. The best solution map of MarkSan would then give the best solution for conserving all of the species in the least amount of space and for the least amount of money. The text on the right hand side gives a summary of the species as well as the amount of space required for each one. It also gives an indication of whether or not the species targets have been met. For our conservation plan, we met 100% of the targets that have been set. We also met all of the percentages set for each of the faunal classes. The best solution map shows the solution for the run with the best objective value. We hope that the Kenyan government will make use of this video and that it will help them to conserve the precious endemic and keystone species harbored there.